Hello, hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Check my, do an audio check real quick. All right. Sounds like we are good to go. All right. We got, like always, jam packed informational Saturday morning. All right. Let me just make sure. Cameras are good to go. Bam. All right. Yep. Looks like we're good. All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday morning. Happy New Year's Eve slash New Year's. Okay. So very, very big day today. Okay. Uh, not just today on the live, but of course, just the day in general, right? Um, perfect, perfect way to end the year, okay? Um, crazy thing is that last year, we started the New Year's on a Saturday, okay? That was episode week one last year where we started our embroidery class for the first time. I didn't know, I had no idea, okay? I just had like a crazy idea. Hey, how about I start something new an embroidery class every Saturday morning, all right? And really, really, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't know all the work that was going to come behind it. I didn't know all the equipment that was needed to go live, okay? But here, episode week 52, our last video, no better way to finish our year Okay. Of course, with a live embroidery class. Okay, and today's episode, right? Very, very special episode. Okay, the secret to embroidery. All right, the secret to embroidery. And really, there is no perfect answer. There is my answer to this question, right? The secret to embroidery. Everybody has their own secret to embroidery, right? Especially depending on what level you're in. And what experience you've gone through, okay? Everybody has gone through different experiences. Everybody has seen different types of situations, okay? But really, today I want to share with you my secret to embroidery, all right? And of course, there's probably, I would say, about 100, 200 different secrets, right? Nothing's really a secret. Everybody has their own, right? So when I do give you my... my um, the secrets of embroidery, all right? Just know we can easily, okay, I'll try not to go off on a tangent, but, re but really when I'm answering that question, I can easily go into a tangent with that answer, all right? But I really have a, uh, a answer that I was kind of thinking about for the past, I would say two weeks on the, on the secrets of embroidery, all right? Uh, this morning, I do have a uh, question of the day, okay? Uh, what was one of your proudest moments this year in embroidery? Okay, it can be a minor one, or it could be a little mini accomplishment, or something major. Okay, and I'll share mine in a bit. Okay, uh, want to say good morning. All right, looks like we have a jam-packed show today. Everybody is super excited, right, about learning about embroidery. I love embroidery. I'd be doing embroidery Saturday morning, no matter what. Okay, Saturday morning is my go-to day. Um, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm going live, I'm not going live, I'm doing embroidery no matter what. So what better way to go live, right? And talk about embroidery. And if you have any questions today, make sure you put a cue. And if you want to add any information, okay? I know we have a lot of talent in the in our viewers, right? We bring a lot of talent when we put all our brains together, okay? We come up with a lot of good ideas and a lot of good information, all right? Uh, I want to say good morning. Morning, Bevy Jean. Happy New Year's, all right? Um, so, M.A., good morning. Demps, good morning, morning from Florida, all right? I know the weather's way different than it is here. Super cold here, all right, right? Roller, Tammy. TMG in the house. All right. Good morning. Happy New Year's. All right. Robin, Matt Gilbert. All right. 
Uh, so we are also on Facebook. I'm trying. I usually don't go live on Facebook, but I'm, try, I'm trying it out. Uh, trying to do some new stuff for the New Year's. All right, happy. Uh, wishing you a happy New Year's from the UK. All right, thanks for all the help and advice. First time in Broer. All right, happy to have you here. All right, good morning, Alicia. All right, Barb. Good morning. Happy New Year's. And all right, all right, we got a good jam-packed house. Good morning, Elisa. T-Town in the house. All right, James Tubb. Good morning, all. So, Ro from Germany. All right. Good morning. Grateful Designs. Good morning. Chanel Lundy. All right, all right. We got D Paradiser. From Paris, Paris, Rhonda Hall, Houston, good morning, Ruben, Baris, Jane, Hector from Compton, Compton in the house. All right, all right, looks like we have a good, good jam packed crowd today. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead, let me start off with, uh, of course, I want to say Happy New Year's to everybody. Okay, uh, super exciting day, super exciting because I don't know about you, but New Year's, right? It always feels like there's a reset button, like we like at, at 12 o'clock midnight, right? We push that reset button and it's like we're starting fresh, right? Everything that we've learned, we jam-packed all that information that we learned and now we use it for next year, okay? So we're definitely pushing the reset button and we're starting from scratch, okay? course we're not starting from scratch we're starting with all that information that we learned okay um one thing that uh one big accomplishment that i got this year and really when uh this week i really had time to kind of sit back and go over uh organize some of the titles uh description you know little small detail stuff that you got to do to the videos and i was fixing the the playlist of our live saturday morning embroidery class and I was calculating all the hours, okay, the hours. Hold on. Let me see if, if I could look at it right here. Uh, I was pulling up all the different hours and uh, calculated how many hours of classroom we had, all right? So we had a total, oops, a total of... 47 classes, all right? So 47 live Saturday mornings this, this year, okay? And it all totaled up to more than 100 hours, okay? More than 100 hours of just embroidery information, all right? So for those who, who kind of started from the beginning or no matter where you started, right? For everybody that's been following us, all right? I've calculated more than 100 hours of just embroidery information, okay? But I even took a step further back, okay? And I thought about all the time that it takes to prepare a class. And that was my biggest accomplishment this year was not just how many hours we went live, but which was about 100 hours. If you divide 100 hours uh, divided by 24 in a day, that's almost over four days of just information, all right? So let's say you start you wanted to start the embroidery class and you want to start from from scratch it would take you four days to watch that whole playlist right so a lot of information right there and when i did take a step back and i kind of thought about it i would say because there's a lot of there's a lot of preparation on the classes there's a lot of research sometimes i know why i'm doing something or sometimes i know how to do something but i need to know why we're doing something because in embroidery there's a lot of tribal knowledge there's a lot of stuff where somebody will tell you to do something, but you don't know exactly why you're doing. Okay. So a lot of stuff that we talked about this year is the who, what, where, when, house of embroidery. And a lot of times I had to go back and look at and research why we're doing certain situations or who started with this type of uh, settings or situations. Right. So I would say you would, you add another three, four hours to, our live shows, okay? That would be another four times three, 12, right? 
that would be about 12 days of just putting out information or gathering information. So my biggest accomplishment is just um, the amount of information I kind of gathered. All right. Not only from the lies, but just questions that I get. I get about, I would say, a good minimum 20 questions a day. All right. And you times that by 365. And some questions requires me to go back and research and figure out um, how to answer certain questions. All right. Because there's some questions where I can't just, you know, I don't have that info on the top of my head sometimes or I want to make sure I give an accurate answer. So sometimes I go back and I answer questions. All right. So to answer. Um, so to answer my question of the day, my biggest accomplishment, I would say just all the information that I gathered. OK, and all the information that we have here now on a playlist. And of course, they're always available to view. OK, uh, sometimes I go back and I, I rewatch some of the live shows and I pick up information where I'm like, OK, that makes sense. Or I want to dig more deeper into something or a question that somebody had. All right. So I'm always learning from going back to the replay. All right. So it's always good, uh, good practice to go back. Uh, practice on whatever uh, we're talking about or anything that we're learning. And of course, the best way to learn something is to first absorb the information and then actually get some hands on practice on that, uh, on that, uh, on anything that you're learning. All right. Um, all right. So today, okay, today to answer this very uh, difficult question on the secrets of embroidery. All right. And like I said in the beginning, in the opening, there's hundreds and hundreds of different answers. This is my answer. All right. This is my answer, something that I've kind of been thinking about for the past two weeks uh, because I get this question. All right. I get the questions kind of it's, it's worded a little different. All right. They're always worded a little different. But overall, I would say the secret of embroidery comes down to two, two features, really three. But th these two features introduces this third feature. All right. And I'm going to kind of make it simple. All right. I'm going to keep it simple, but just know um, we can easily go all day talking about the secrets of embroidery. Right. But I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to say just like the thumbnail said. All right. I'm going to say. Speed, speed, speed. OK, you need to be quick in embroidery. Now, I'm not talking about taking shortcuts. All right. I'm just talking about speed, speed, speed. You know what you're doing. All right, you're doing one step and you already know what's the next three steps involved. Okay, so we'll talk about how to get to speed. All right, it's speed, 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 followed by repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, every time you, you do something, okay, you learn something like your brain files information. So the next time you do something, you either have a better way to do it. Or you're just kind of knocking projects out, right? You're not starting from scratch, relearning everything, all right? So speed, 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 okay? And when I were talking about speed, right, we have, we have to be quick on three items, right? I always talk about the, the embroidery triangle. I always talk about the digitizing, all right? The digitizing, we got to be quick. And if you send it out, Right. If you send it out and you test it out and something's not right, you got to know whether you could fix it on your own or you got to send it back to a digitizer. But you know exactly what's wrong. OK, so even though. Even though. It's good practice to send out your digitizing, you still have to know the basics of digitizing because you got to know whether this is something you could fix or this is something you got to send it back to the digitizer. All right. Of course, the best, best case scenario is you having full control of designs to the point where you're digitizing your own designs. And at the very minimum text, OK, you should be you should know how to do basic, basic text of embroidery. All right. So when I'm talking about speed, OK, we could even take two steps back. All right. And just look at the whole the whole big picture of embroidery, all right? I'm talking about, when we're talking about a project, everything starts with the initial contact of a customer, okay? Everything starts with, hey, how are you doing? My name is blank, right? 
from the time you, the initial contact, whether it's an email, direct message, or one-on-one -on -one interaction, all right, from the time you, you first make that initial contact to that customer receives that product, all right, that's a block, a block, okay? And then if we chop it up, okay, and this is gonna lead to my third item of my, the, the secrets to embroidery, all right? From the time you meet that customer to the time you confirm, okay? You confirm the artwork, the stitch out, the sample stitch out, and you get paid, okay? Your initial pay, whether you pick up pay in full or you get, or you collect payment in half, okay? The, depending on how you conduct business, okay? I always collect full payment up front, okay? From the time you, the initial contact to the time you confirm slash pay, take payments, Okay, that whole block of time, you're not really getting paid for that time. Okay, all that time is just kind of like open, right? How long does it take you to close a deal, right? If it takes you two days to close a deal, then potentially your project, the project that you're working on, potentially might not make a profit, all right, in the long run, all right? So what you need to do, right, you need to make sure that time frame is as quick, as efficient as possible. So from the time you meet somebody to the time they confirm their order, it has to be as efficient and quick. So when I talk about um, speed, 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 okay, that's what I'm talking about. We need to be quick, but we're not taking shortcuts. We're, we're making sure everything is covered, everything is taken care of, okay? Now, there's this fine line. When you get confirmation, you get that initial payment, or full payment, you are now production ready, okay? And I'm gonna say that is the sweet spot of embroidery. That that there, right there, production ready, that is the secret of embroidery because at that moment, that's when you start making a profit. When you are production ready, okay? You're ready to go. Now, you, now you're actually creating items to make a profit, okay? So, up to that point, you are not making money from the time you, you make that initial contact. So you do samples, confirmation, up to the point you get paid, you're not making any money at that point. So the longer you extend that time, okay, the less you're going to end up making in the, in the big picture of things. But as soon as you get production ready, you are now making a profit from that line down. Okay. Um, now, the secret, right? It still goes with product being production ready. Secret of production ready is what I'm saying is repetition, repetition, repetition. Now, since you have that item ready to go, the more you the more you repeat that item, the more is more profitable. Okay, two reasons. One, you're doing it over and over and over. You already know what you're doing. Okay, you already know uh, what's working, what's not working. All right. Second, okay. Let's say you you do a uh, hundred pieces of something, okay. Hundred hats, okay. A month later, they come back, and they want another order of a hundred hats. Guess what? You don't have to do that initial part anymore. You are at production ready. It's ready to go profit, okay. So the secret of embroidery: speed, 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 to the point where you're production ready, and then you are just repetition, 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 okay. Um, I try not to go on a tangent, right? Because it's very easy to go on a tangent, but I would say uh, something, something that I kind of want to go uh, moving forward, especially this year, 2023, is the business side of embroidery, okay? Talking about consumables, talking about how to price uh, your products, okay? Cost of goods, all right? Comparing, comparing all of our consumables, okay? Everything that comes, goes into a project for embroidery, all right? So um, I kind of freestyled that one, all right? But for the most part, okay, speed, 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 repetition, and production ready, okay? You always wanna be at production ready. You wanna have everything confirmed. Your, your whole goal is let me get this project confirmed and paid, okay? Now, now the fun part starts, all right? Now production ready, now you're doing the fun part. All right, all right. Now, today's theme, 
All right, let me show you this artwork that I got here. All right, let me kind of make this a little bigger. All right, oops, wrong one. Uh, of course, it's New Year's, so New Year's resolution, right? Everybody wants to get fit, all right? Everybody has that on their to-do list, all right? I know I'm not the only one that has that on our to-do list, all right? So I got a um, very simple, okay? I, li I like to use uh, simple designs to, to kind of illustrate the digitizing portion, all right? Uh, we have this very nice heart right this heart is looks like it's uh it's deadlifting these heavy weights all right now i, I just kind of want to go over different ways to uh, different ways as an output production right let's say a customer has this as their logo right and they just want a left chest logo right easy day right easy day just to do a left chest logo but what if what if we can go ahead and give them other options all right so that's here this picture here let's go big right here all right so let's go here all right so that same design all right so let's say they want a left chest logo right easy day okay but then we could recommend and say hey how about front chest design too right and i'm going to show you how long does it take right pretty pretty uh does it take too much time all right to go from something like this right just your regular front chest logo type this is three and a half wide three and a half inches wide Okay, to go to something like this, seven, seven inches wide, all right, front chest logo, all right, very simple design, okay, very simple design, we're not doing anything crazy, and then to the point where we're like, hey, since you're getting three dozens polo sweaters, how about a hat, right, so this is the hat that I'm wearing right now, all right, to 3D puff. All right. And really to go to from to this 3D puff. All right. It's really the same file as our left chest logo with a couple extra steps. All right. So to go from here, it's the same concept to go here with some simple extra steps. All right. So that's kind of what I want. All right, I'm going to try to use, um, I like to use the simple tools on the digitizing software, uh, tools that usually most softwares have. All right, of course, before we get into the software, I always like to draw out, kind of show you the plan for today. All right, so here is a, um, like a, a sketch of our design here all right uh let's see which one do we do first let's do this one first just the regular um left chest right just regular simple everyday type logo okay um i like basic logos all right if you want to make money in embroidery okay corporate logos just regular logos those are your money makers right there all right because this is how many stitches you think this is if this is uh three and a half inches wide okay let me let me let me see how many stitches it is let me come to um we are looking at 2100 stitches right 2100 all right this is money makers right here all right so if you're talking if you're working with uh Corporate type businesses, all right, they don't have anything crazy. They're not coming with crazy logos. They're coming with some uh, some very simple type stuff. All right, so, okay, we our whole goal is to cut up our, our project into objects, 
or shapes. For example, this here is one shape. Okay, this is one shape here. All right. If you can identify which are your shapes, okay, then you have potential to be a great digitizer. All right, there's one shape. Here's another shape. Here's another shape. And that's all you're really doing. Here, okay, here, we actually have two shapes. We have one here. And then we have another one coming across, all right? And we kind of want to have that overlap. Anytime you have two objects touching each other, somebody has to overlap, okay? So in this case, this bar would be our bottom side, okay? And then I always talk about the, the TAS system, okay? That's our trace, angle, settings, all right? Digitizing is all about these three features here, all right? Trace, angle, setting. This is what I just did right now. This is your tracing, okay? Then you got to know your angle. At what angle are your sand stitches going to go, all right? So... A lot of your, your angles is just common sense, right? It, it, it only makes sense for your stitches to look like this, right? And then here, we have these stitches going that way. And then this bar, the end of the bar, we'll have it going this way. All right, and then the heart, and then really this part, these, the, this part of the weights, it's a copy and paste from here to here. So we really don't have to kind of analyze this part too much, okay, because this part pretty much has it covered. All right, um, here, you got to make a decision. Do you want this space to be overlap or not? All right, so these are decisions that digitizers make here. If not, we got to make sure we have a gap. So in this, in this situation, I'll put a gap, okay? Here we have the heart. Let me zoom out a bit, I'm not too tight. All right, so here, same thing. We wanna get a good trace of our heart. All right. You see this pivot here? Anytime we have a sharp turn, it's called a pivot, all right? Very important when we're digitizing. All these are rounded. When we get here, another pivot. That means it's a sharp turn. All right, these are all rounded. And then here for the heart, this is the special part here. All right, some notes we want to make here. We want a gap from our heart. All right, and then another gap. So if we have a gap, we don't have to worry about um, our overlaps right here. All right, here, this is important here. We got to know, so we already took care of our trace. Let's take care of our angle. So we know at this point, our stitches should be at a 90 degree. Okay, here. All right, they should be at a 45 here. All right. Uh, 135, 270. Uh, all right. I gotta get my angles back. I used to have all these memorized, all right? But this is kind of how you know how your angle should be, all right? And then your settings, all right? Your settings, let's see, I made a list right here. Just making my notes here. I want to show you these notes that I took right here. All right, uh, settings, length, density, secondary, underlay, stitch angles, start, stop, pull comp, tie in, tie out, trims, sequence. All right, really, 
Um, and we're going to take care of all that underlay. Um, of course, we'll talk about the, the settings and all that underlay and all that stuff. All right, let's go ahead. Let's digitize this. I like to work backwards. Okay, I like to show, I like to like reverse engineer this stuff. So when I'm digitizing, you kind of have an idea why I'm doing certain things. All right. All right. Hey, good morning, T-shirt chick. All right, good to have you here. We have uh, Analdua86, first time here. All right, welcome. Simbawa from Uganda. Happy New Year's. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, good morning, Lani. Silver City, North Carolina. All right. It's the last episode of the year. Now, let me just make this announcement, all right, before we start right here. Big announcement here. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, one, I just bought Embrilliance. Okay, I know I get a ton of questions on Embrilliance. Um, I just bought it. I bought, uh, what is it, Stitch Artist 3. All right, so I've been diving deep, going through all the settings, all everything. Okay, I really want to, uh, a lot of the, right, embroidery, it's, it's pretty much all the same throughout uh, different um, softwares. All right, so I'm looking forward to really getting into it. All right, so look for some uh, information on uh, and brilliance. All right, uh, another thing is this is our last Saturday morning live. Okay, not just for the year, but uh, coming next year because today, actually in ten days, I'm moving. Okay, I'm moving to Virginia. Uh, the shop here, my wife, she's still gonna be running the shop here, so we're still doing our everyday uh, work here. Okay, but I am. Uh, I'm about to change duty station because I'm in the Navy, about to change duty station to San Diego. But before I move to San Diego, I got to do a lot of training throughout the East Coast. So I'll, I'll be uh, in training. All right. But of course, I'm going to go hard uh, on the lives, on the videos, on all everything about embroidery. So that's going to remain. OK, uh, I just don't have a date. I don't have a specific locked in date when I'm going to go live. Okay. Of course, Saturday always works. I got used to Saturday, so I might, I might uh, bring back the Saturday. Okay. I might bring back, uh, right now I'm pondering whether I should get Saturday, Tuesdays, Monday or Tuesday. Okay. One of those three days. All right. Or maybe I do both. I do a Saturday and a Tuesday. All right. So it's still up in the air. Okay. But we're going to go hard. All right. We're going to go hard. Uh, a lot of it is going to be on the on the softwares, different software. So, uh, so far I got uh, Wilcom. Of course, we're going to go strong on Wilcom uh, and Brilliance. And I'm also going to uh, open up my Chroma and go deep into the Chroma too. All right. Uh, so look out for that. All right. And the business side of embroidery. All right. We're going to dig deep and we're really going to dig deep and, and go into these consumables, cost of business, cost of goods, uh, cost of um, of garments, right? Different brands and all sorts of good stuff. All right. All right. Um, all right. All right. Let's see. We got a question. T Town. Do you know if combining closest joint is the same thing as branching or no? No, it's different. I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a uh, closest joint here on this example, so it'll be a perfect time to show you. Uh, what branching does, it brings everything all in one, kind of like in one object. So it locks everything in one object. Uh, closest join, you still have, all your objects are still separated. Hey, Siddhar, good morning. Happy New Year's, right? Um, all right, right. All right, we got good. All right, let's, let's, let's get busy right now in the digitizing. Let me see. Um, can you write the angle degrees on the heart shape for us? All right. I'll show you right now, right here at the digitizing. All right. But actually, yeah, that's actually a good. 
Let me just show you what we're talking about right here. So this one here, this one's the easy one, 45 degrees. All right, 135. All right, 270. And then three, oh, 315, 320, 15, three, question mark. All right, we'll check it out on the software. All right, I used to know all my angles perfectly by heart because in the Navy, you got to know all that information. All right. All right, let's get busy right here. Uh, let me see, T-Town. So I guess closest joint is not. No, it, it's on Hatch. Definitely on Hatch. Hatch has a closest joint. All right. Bam. All right. Let's get to the fun part. All right. Um, so the first thing is when you're looking at this design, if you're if you're if you're looking at this design, what would you digitize first? Okay, so these are the questions digitizers need to make. All right, what do you stitch out first? All right, so usually, okay, no matter what you're digitizing, you will always want to start from the inside out. Okay, of course, there's certain times where you change stuff up. Um, all right, so actually, let, let me play this for you. Let me play you the final one so you kind of understand what I'm doing as I'm going, all right? This is what the final outcome is, all right? Let me push a replay on this, all right? But you could kind of start thinking to yourself, what would you stitch out first? All right, let's play. Of course, the heart, right? The heart's in the middle, okay? Let me push a little pause. This right here, what it's doing right now, it's starting with the underlay. So you can see that I'm using an outer underlay, okay, as my number one. And then it's doing a zigzag underlay, all right? Purpose to, for an underlay is just to keep everything nice and clean, nice and tight. So we, to avoid any gaps and anything kind of opening up, all right? And then now it's doing our sand stitch, all right? It's just following that trace that we're doing. All right, it's gonna complete this here. And then it stops, all right? I have it stopping at every trim, all right? Since I want a gap, I just put a I just put a trim right there just to make a... Now, I'm gonna make that bar in the middle, okay? So the same thing you can see here, I have an underlay, uh, a edge run with a zigzag, okay? And then now I continue my... So all that information, all that setting, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna include that setting when we're doing it. And then it's gonna transition into the next object. Okay, so that you see how we it it's under this object. Okay, it's gonna do the underlay. It's gonna now it's gonna start the fan stitch. And then here I, I actually have a uh, closest joint here. So it's gonna continue, start from bottom, finish there and jump to the next object, all right? So now it's doing that one, jump to the next one, go to the next one, all right? Cut, now it's gonna do the next side, all right? Bam, so same thing, all right? So pretty straightforward, all right? Straight, straightforward. But I wanna show you this side so you kinda can follow when I'm doing it here. All right, so here, all right, we're gonna use the column A. Column A, usually every software has column A. All right, it's, as we're digitizing, you're setting your, your angles here, All right? So for example, here, when I click one side, let me change it to metric. And then you could also measure it, right? You can measure your, um, your distance, so 3.72. All right. So when when you're clicking on the on the column A, you're setting your angle. So when I do this next click, I just set that that angle according to how I'm lining up my lines. So here, this is where you're setting your angle, right? 
here you're kind of like estimating right so here i want it to be a 90 degree okay and then here you just want to you want to picture the way your angles are going to be so here it's the 90 degrees so i want to be straight up all right so that's how you're doing you're clicking one side to the next side here you want it to be 90 degrees so you want this click to be right up right above this one here okay so really you don't have to know the the angle here i'm at a zero degree angle right you don't have to know the exact number, but you got to know how it visually looks. Okay. So here and then here, I want it to be pointing down. And you could always go back and adjust your angles. It's not like you're locked in. Okay. Because sometimes something doesn't look right and you got to fix it. All right. Since I want a gap, I'm not going to go all the way to the tip. I'm going to kind of leave it here because of the push pull. Bam. All right. And then select it. H. All right. These are the angles that I just said. So let's say like this one, this one here kind of looks a little off. All right. So right now it tells you the angle here. Okay. Sometimes you're just, you're just going off what looks okay. Okay. So here I want it to be 90. It's at 89. All right. 89 is fine. All right. 88. All right. But if you need it to be perfect, All right, this right here, I said it was 45. Well, this one's still not in the middle, but yeah. So somewhere in between here is like a 45, all right? So that's fine right there. This one here, I want it to be at 90. Let's see if I got it 90. Oh, perfect, 90. All right, so we're good there. All right, uh, you could do your settings right now or at the very end since everything's gonna have the same settings. Let's see. Um, for my Bam, bam. All right. Settings. When we're talking about settings, right? So I gave you that list of items. 38 is usually a good one. Special underlay center run. So you could put a edge run. And I kind of move it. Let me show you what an edge run is right here. Right? Edge run is this one. That's so that 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 line in between. I call it like railroad tracks because we're gonna put some railroad tracks, and then you could put a zigzag in there. All right. So we saw that one. All right. Uh, so I like to have these three boxes lit up here. My object properties. This is where I put all my settings. My color object list. This uh, allows me uh, to set up my sequence. What goes first? Okay. Uh, and then this third one, design information. I like to have this design information because it tells me how many stitches I have and most important, how many trims I have. All right. So something that I always want to check at the very end is how many trims do I have? All right. So let's continue here. All right. Uh, this should be fairly quick, this one. All right. I want to have a gap right here. So I want to make sure I don't get too close to it. All right, so same thing. Just setting your angles. Every time you click, right, you're connecting your lines. You're kind of setting up your angles, okay? This part is going under the, the, the weights. All right, reason why I, went, I extended it, because this is going under. Since I have uh, two objects combining, and one object ha always has to be uh under another object all right not always but for the most part all right now we do this part here all right uh good thing about the column a this one here it tells you how long your stitches are so for example here 5.5 5.41 all right so i know i'm getting a good solid sand stitch there okay and then here bam all right so same thing it's just 
rinse and repeat. A lot of a lot of digitizing. That's what it is. Just rinse and repeat over and over. All right. Gonna make this one here. Get that curve. Bam. Then here, I have a little small. And I'll show you something. Usually, you don't want your, your stitches. Um, I don't like to have my stitches lower than um, 0.4 millimeters. All right. So, for example, here, right, at the very tip part. Okay. You see how it's telling me how big it is? I don't want to be below 40, right? And I'll tell you, right? Those are at the tips, all right? Um, now, there's a way that the, the software protects itself. It's like a form of protection here. I'll show you what it is. Um, there's a setting that tells you uh, the smallest stitch that you want. So I have it at set already at 0.4. So even if I were to go below 0.4, okay, it, it would just, um, it automatically moves it up to 40. All right, all right. I kind of forgot where it's at, but there's somewhere a setting that tells you your minimum stitch, what, what you want it to be at, all right? So I'm drawing a blank right now, but just in case, reason why I want to show you that, because just in case, let's say H, just in case I'm, I were to make this like super close to each other, all right? The software is still gonna protect itself and it's not gonna go below 0.4, all right? All right, and then D, bam. This one, I have it running the, uh, a different, so from here to here, bam, this one goes straight and then it starts curving. Bring this out a bit. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, closest joints. So right now, I have six trims. All right, I have six trims. And let's make sure our sequence is correct. I already know it's correct, but the way you, you make sure your sequence is correct. I know it's the same for hatch, okay, where you select one, select the next one. You select them in order that you want them to stitch. Then up to the uh, top right, where it has those one, two, three, it says the sequence by selects. Okay, just click on that and it'll put that in that order. All right, let me lock this drawing. All right, lock that. All right, now we have six trims. Um, I still want to trim right here, but I don't want to trim from the bar to the weights. All right, so I'm going to put uh, closest, apply closest joint. Okay, so I know on hatch, it's the same hotkey also. It's J, or it should be, if nothing has changed. I know they have three now. I used to use it when it was uh, hatch two. All right, now trims, two trims. All right, so everything has combined together. All right, and you could see where they where it's making its jump. So we could like separate these a bit. All right. Same thing here. All right, you could see where it's jumping. All right, it's making a it's gonna finish here and then it jumps to the next one. So that's what's called the the closest joint. Together. And then these two could combine. Actually, this one, I want it to, to be a little closer here. A little overlap right there. All right. And now we could grab these three or these items here. The power of duplicate. All right. We duplicate, we flip it horizontal. Then we put a negative sign on the x axis. All right now we can line it up right here. Bam, right there. All right. 
Now, make this item right here. We need that overlap. Actually, it has a little bend. Make sure we get this little bend on it. So put a little curve there. Man, three. All right. So right after this guy, so I this is where I put my select. Right after this guy, I wanted to stitch this one, this one, this one, this one, the third sequence by select. And one, two, three. So right now I'm showing four trims. Let's apply closest joint. Okay, three. So that's what I want. I want the heart to be one, the bar right side two, and then the left side three. Okay. Um, select that. Just make sure our underlays all together. So we want to put a edge run. 50 is fine with a zigzag. Yeah, so all of them should have. Zigzag, center run, edge run. All right, now we should be good. Yeah. All right, we still have three trims. Let's replay this. Bam. Let's speed it up. Make sure everything's cool. All right, cut, and then goes to the next one. All right, so that one right here. Okay, very straightforward. This one I would say is for a left chest logo here. Okay. All right, all right. Left chest logo. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, let's say delete. Let's delete this. Oops. All right. Let's say unlock. Let's say we want to wow our customer, and we're like, "Hey, let me let me show him other items that we can do." The width right now is at a three point five, right? Let's say we want to go for a sweater, right? And right. So right now we we increase it to seven inches wide, right? As you can see here. And let me show you a replay of what we're going to do right now. All right. So that one's here. Okay. Very, very straightforward. All right. This one here, we're going to use the uh, column C, the steel stitch. All right. So I know a lot of other um, softwares call it the steel stitch. Column C digitizes columns, borders. All right. Let's push play on this. All right, does the heart first? Then it's gonna do our bar. Bam, all in one shot. And now it's gonna do the left side. All right, very straightforward, right? Okay. Um, and oh let me make an announcement real quick before we get into this. All right. We got uh, Chi Aslan from Pakistan. All right. Good to have you. All right. Jesse Gibson in the house. All right. Marisa, good morning. All right. Um, FYI, if you are a channel member, so I do have the channel member. Uh, FYI, um, it is $19.99 a month. Everything I'm working on. Okay. Especially now that we transition into the new year, I'm going to work on, uh, I am working on the book. Okay. I am, I am working on the embroidery book all about embroidery. Okay. A lot of the notes stuff that I'm working on, I'm putting it down in the group members. Okay. A lot of the files, today's files during the group members, you can follow along. If you want to purchase these files that we're working on today, okay. Just to follow along. Uh, I have this one, the sweater one, and, uh, this one that I'm wearing for the 3D puff. Okay, it is on the website. The link is in the description. All right, just a FYI. And look out if you are a channel member, look out for a lot of PDFs, a lot of templates. All right, I'm going very, very heavy 
on the templates. I like templates. I have a whole bookshelf of notes that I just been taking all year and I'm going to condense them into a very easy to follow uh, PDF sheet. All right. So look out for that. All right. All right. Let's go back here. Let's show this one here. OK. Um, let's look at it in the let me show you again. Here on the picture, OK, just so we could see some details. Uh, cancel. We get the picture of it. All right. Show you here. All right. Oh, oh, oh. So this one's here. Okay. Let's zoom in a bit. There's a couple of stuff I just want to kind of go. All right. So when we're digitizing, all right, let's check out some stuff that we can notice. All right. We're going to leave a little gap here just so you could kind of see it coming out of the heart. All right. We do have an overlap here. So we do want that to be overlapped. Okay. And then our bars coming together. All right, our bar is coming together. All right, bam, bam. These uh, are 3.5 sand, uh, 3.5 millimeter sand stitches. All right, I think that's like the sweet spot right now that I'm working with, with sweaters. I think it works pretty good. All right, it stands out pretty clean. All right. All right, let's go back to the software. All right. Zoom here. Let me take out this one here. All right. So we're going to use this one, the column C stitch. All right. Very, very useful one. All right. And then um, TMG, why different underlays on two designs? Uh, so in this, uh, so yeah, this one here, I think this is the one that I put a, uh, a center run yeah this one has a center run so you can see the center run uh no specific reason okay uh, i could have put i i could have put the uh the edge run here okay uh when i stitched it out it didn't make um like there was no noticeable gaps or anything so i just left it the way it was but that is a good observation there okay all right so here i'm going to Column C. So when we're working with column C, you can look here, uh, my settings, okay? Uh, column, you put it for 3.5. All right, it's ready to go. We don't really need an offset, okay? Uh, sometimes offsets are useful in this situation, not necessary. So you notice I have a, a rounded circle around my uh, cursor. That's telling me how wide my stitches are, all right? So let's say I put like something crazy, like eight millimeters. All right, you see how big that cursor got? That's how big your your thread or your stitches would be. All right, so very useful just to kind of give you a reference of how wide your stitches are compared to the to, to the drawing. All right, so here I do want uh, overlap, so I'm going to push in a tad bit here. Okay, and right here, all we're doing is tracing. Okay, hold on, one more setting that I want to give you here when you're doing with column C. Uh, I have it as a sand stitch, all right? So that's how we want to go. You do have other options here, but usually when you're doing column C, okay, you're doing sand stitches. All right, so anytime you have a curve, that's when you put a curve node there, okay? And then if you don't get it perfect, it's all good. You could always go back and clean it up. All right, we get to here. Actually, you can put backspace. Right? I'm gonna get a little closer here. Bam, right there, sand stitch, perfect. Perfectly laid out. All right, bam. Then you put a walking stitch, so digitize open shape. Okay, you could put a walking stitch, walk over to this side. But we just need a regular walking stitch. 
And now, go back to column C. Now, walk back. Okay. Oops, I didn't like that. Oh, column C. Uh, 3.5. All right, it didn't like something. I'm not going to click too close to that. I'm going to leave it here, but I'm going to fix it afterwards. Click it there. All right, let's continue going. All right, it's not liking something right here. Let me delete that. I'll put that later. It's crazy. It keeps on pumping it up. 3.5. All right, now we're good. Crazy stuff was happening. All right, so now I'm just gonna trace the out, the out part, the outer part. Bam, right there. Now we can kind of fix our sides here, H. So we could just tell it to go up a bit. H. Actually, we could keep it like right here. We'll fix it in a bit. All right, now let's make that walking stitch from here to here. All right, put this in between in the middle. And now you could control where you want your uh, start stops. All right, for example, H. Tells me green means where I want to start, where I want to end. So that's perfect right there. Then I go to this walking stitch, H, start there. Yep. And this one, H. I want to start on this side. And yeah, that's fine right there. So I should only have one cut when I put this high here. Two trims. All right. Let me see where this other trim is at. All right. Um, H. All right, there we go. now one trim. All right, bam, right there. All right, let's go back and this is all we're doing, rinse and repeat. But once we do one side, pretty much the, the other side is good to go. All right, let's, to make this curve, all right, you see how there's like, it has that curve. If we were to make a straight line, it would be like this. So you want to find where that curve's at. Curve curve and then pivot drop has a little bend right here so we're going to put a curve here and then a straight a straight to a curve to a straight take it all the way up we start curving to the straight here a little mini straight here then a curve then a straight and we go dry pivot turn we're going to curve here little curve and then we got a little curve right here then we want that gap okay so bam right there all right now this is the cool part here okay we can give it the look okay we can give it the look as if there are weights on top of each other or against each other so we could just go from here Instead of doing this this side here, we just started from here. All right. Bring it all the way in here. All right. So now it's giving the illusion, right, that something's connected to each other. Same thing here. All right, we start curving, then we could go straight in here. See how we're looking? All right, now it's starting to form its shape. In here, same thing. Bam, all right, now let's check our sequence. 
Like, what's the order that we want to go? We want to go this one. Yep, the way we did it. All right, let's check our trims. So we have five. Let's go ahead. This one, I wanted its own color. So put that one like that. And this one, apply closest joint. Bam, two. So we have the red and then the blue. Okay, so the apply closest joint pretty much just rearranged our start and stops. Okay, that works because our sequence is right next to each other. All right. And now with these, bam, one, three, we could copy or duplicate, flip. So mirror, and then add that negative sign here. And let's go ahead. Let's create this one. A little bend here and a sharp turn. Okay, curve straight. Take it all the way up here. Okay, all the way up here. All right, bam, it's a wrap. Okay, now we actually, we just sequenced this. We want this to go first, second, third, fourth sequence up here. And then uh, apply close to joint, bam, three cuts. All right, so we got red heart, one cut. Then we have right side of the bar, two, and then the left side, bam, three. Okay, and then just select all. This is where you put your underlays. Okay, so we do have uh, options. We could either go uh, center run. So on the example that I have, I have center run zigzag. Okay, so when I did the stitch out, it works out real good. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Man, let's push play. All right, he's doing that, bam. And then does that part connects right there. Moves over to the left. All right, so some things that we want to look into, okay? We want to make sure, usually you want to make sure that you're connect. All right, I am here. We have some overlap, which is fine. We could actually bring this one back a bit, okay? If, you're, if you need to make some adjustments, you can always bring these back in a bit, okay? Just always know that your sand stitches, they're always going to push out, okay? So H here, it's going to push out, but I, I'm still going to give it a little bit more in. Okay, T, bam, all right. And that's how we get the, the seven inch sweater, all right, very popular for sweaters. All right, now let's talk about the 3D puff. All right, I think we're good with questions. Yep, we're looking good. All right, all right, bam. All right, I'm seeing some uh, thumbs up for Brilliance. All right, yeah, uh, I've already started playing with Brilliance. All right, so I'm looking forward to this year, going hard, seeing all the capability. There's a couple stuff that I like about it. All right, which I'm gonna kind of dig a little deeper into it. All right, um, now let's go into the 3D puff. All right, actually, let me bring it up again on the camera. So we could see a couple stuff that I want to show you. All right, let's see this 3D puff. Actually, let me show you the, let me see if I have the sample. All right, so when I'm before I put it on a hat, I, I'll sample it on a flat, like on a flat twill. Okay, but it's always different from twill, something flat to a hat. So let me show you. This was my initial. It looks very nice on um, 
on pink. Okay. Sometimes uh, your initial let's zoom in a bit. Your initial uh, stitch out on a flat is going to look different than on a hat. All right. So a couple things here: the push pull. You can see it's kind of pushing in a tad bit too much, right? On the flat. Um, we're always looking at our. Let's see, yeah, we can see good right there. We're always. We're always looking at our this portion here. Our capping. So these here are ends, our capping. Okay. But one thing that I want to make sure is to have spacing here. All right. Just so we don't have foam kind of stuck in between these lines. Okay. So what I did want to make sure, I want to make sure these items are now closed. So in the sweater, I had it open, but here I want them to be closed. All right. It just avoids me having to put a, a capping on the ends. All right. So uh, as long as they're closed. Okay. But here, since I have them open, all right, open them up and here have this capping. All right. But once we put it on a hat and we make our little adjustments. All right. Let me see if I could see. It. Bam. Right here. All right, so you could see our uh, where they connect, okay, connecting good, and our capping, all right, perfectly spaced out, okay, nothing's kind of looking too weird. All right, bam. So I'm going to show you a couple things that I like to do when I'm doing a 3D puff. So the rules kind of change with 3D puff. And really, if you're into uh, making money in embroidery, I would always suggest you do 3D puff, all right? Because 3D puff, that's that's where the money's at, okay? Polo chest, polo shirts, 3D puff hats, okay? I'm a big fan of that, all right? All right, now let's, let's see the replay on the software, okay? A couple items that I want to show you. Hold on. All right. Let's push play on this. Let's see. Um, trims. So if you look at the trims, I have eight trims. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I put eight trims, right? Well, you can kind of see because I kind of spaced them out. I didn't want to put a connector here. That would kind of hold down the foam here. So each one has a, um, so I have the heart as one trim. Uh, no, the heart and the bar. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we'll see. We'll see where my counts are at. Let's see. Let's push play on this. All right. So right now, uh, we need a placement stitch. We need to know where to put down our our puff okay so this is a uh this is not the full area that we need to put a puff but we get a, a rough idea of where to put our puff okay once we put down our puff now the stitching begins okay so you can see i, I started here on the top just to hold down that puff and then i'm going to do the bar first here all right and then let's speed it up a bit Okay, one thing to notice as underlay, you want to avoid as much underlay as possible. So center runs are usually a go-to. You don't want to have a zigzag or edge runs. Unless necessary, there are some times where you want to kind of hold back some of the foam. Okay. Very rare situations. All right, here. So I'm going to knock out this middle bar just to push out this foam out. And then I'm going to create the weights out here. Okay. Knock this part out, and then it's going to stop here. It's going to cut. And let's kind of zoom in on what just happened here at the very end by slowing it down. All right. So here, I want to, I, I don't want to end my stitches on the end where my uh, capping is done. So let's go slow here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one side first. I'm going to stop here. Go down, 
finish the bottom part and then i'm gonna have some overlap so you'll see some overlap come out here okay so bam right there it's overlapping that's just to cover any gapping on our phone all right bam right there all right then it's gonna go to the next one i have a running stitch uh, or a walking stitch going down to the capping okay and then my capping is gonna walk to the next capping and then it's going to start the actual sand stitch. All right. So you could see the, the, the shape of it. It's going to do the top side first. It's going to walk down and do the bottom side with a little bit of overlap. All right. So same thing, just overlap. It just avoids having little gaps in between. Okay. Then it's going to do the same thing to the next one. All right. This one is going to do a two piece. It's going to do this first part, first part. And since it's connected to this piece, okay, we can do all this in one shot. Bam. It's connected there with some overlap here. So notice that we have some overlap. All right. So we got the left hand side. Now we're going to go and do the heart. Okay. I'm going to do a, a, a center run just to hold out that foam. And now it's going to. All right, let me pause here and just show you something. I have some overlap here, just so I don't have to put a uh, capping in between there. All right. All right, let's speed this up. Bam. Just gonna do all the way through. Finish out here. All right. Now it's gonna go to the next one, and it's. Pretty much the same thing, right? It's copy and paste from the left hand side. Okay. Um, so let me fast forward this stuff. So, same thing as the other side. All right. Some things that I want to point out here is this spacing here. Okay. I put the spacing just to kind of, just two reasons. All right. Two reasons. One is just so our foam doesn't get all kind of ugly in here. Okay. Or less cleaning. Okay, if we have this foam, if we have this gap here, it allows me to remove that that foam clean right there. All right. Um, yeah, and we want to give spacing between our uh, so it looks more so it looks it gives the visual appearance that it's different weights with each other. All right. So sometimes you want to you want to kind of um, change the the picture around a bit okay and then another thing i want to point out that's very important here the original drawing it had our um our distance our heart at a 3.7 right but in order for it to kind of stand out a bit uh, uh i felt like it looked a little thin for 3d puff and this is something that i know i've done a lot of times with customers is I recommended, hey, let's go a little bit bolder or let's make our design look a little bit more bold, okay? Uh, usually it looks better, okay? Especially with text, there are times if you try to digitize the text exactly like the, exactly like the design, it might look a little too thin. Sometimes we gotta go and just extend it a tad bit, okay? So here I brought it out to uh, five, close to five millimeters. All right, and let me actually let me show you how I go about extending this design right here. Okay, because sometimes it's not as straightforward. Sometimes you could increase the push pull compensation, but in this situation, it would have it would have done it on both sides, and I just want it to be on one side. Okay, so let me show you something. All right, um, let's hide this. Hide. Let's hide this. All right. So what I have here, you can see here on, on my on this drawing here. Let's see. Oh, I got to go the same one. Oops. All right. What you could do, uh, there's different softwares that do this. Uh, let me delete this, the ones I have. Just to show you here you could you could draw or you can make an image let's do this a closed shape 
Let's say you just draw an image, right? Just trace this heart. This is my my way. I'm pretty sure there's more. Um, there's different ways to do it, all right? But this is kind of like a quick and dirty way that I like to extend. All right, let's do this. All right, what I just did right now, I just made a, a stitch right here, right? Very quick. And what you can do, you can offset this. So let me put an offset. Oh, cancel. Let me make sure I selected it. Offset this. Okay. Um, let's say I wanted to go so uh, five, five millimeters. And then here on Wilcom, you could tell it if you wanted a vector or a stitch. Um, I actually I can make it a vector. All right. Uh, bam. All right. So what it does, what it does, it creates me a, a, a stitch out, not a stitch out, but the design that's a little bit extended correctly. All right. So let's see H. No. If I need to edit this H. Right. Because all this should be rounded. Right. Sometimes when it does an offset, it's going to kind of do some crazy stuff for you. All right, so now when I'm tracing it, okay, when I'm tracing it, unhide all, all right, that's how I get my, uh, well, we could have cleaned it up a bit, all right, but that's how I get it a extended, that's how I can extend my sand stitches here, all right, just kind of like an FI if you're trying to make your sand stitches a little bigger without using pool compensation or anything crazy, all right, all right. B T, right? All right. So let's see. And then let's see, we have a question here, Team G, for the 3D puff cap. Did you use Gnome Dance Funk and thread? Oh, yep, exactly. So uh, I always recommend Gnome Dance. Okay, I'm a big fan now of Candle Thread. Uh, so this one here, I am using. It has like a specific shine. That has all right. I do want to do more projects that I'm showing um that I'm showing the candle thread. All right, but of course Madeira, I've been using Madeira for the longest. Uh, but candle thread is pretty good. And 8012, yes, 8012. Since we're using uh dense foam, okay, the 8012 just goes through it and titanium 8012. And then usually for foam, I, I bring it down a bit. I bring it down to like uh six, sometimes five hundred the speed. Okay, if you know, if it's nothing too critical, like time critical or anything, or I'm not running like a big amount, okay, easily run that. But yeah, I do definitely uh, lower it down. Uh, it just reduces headaches at the very end. All right, uh, let me see. Bam, bam. All right. All right. Very good stuff right there. All right. Uh, so we talked about three different types of designs, right? Usually, okay, I, I know this has worked for me a lot of times, right? I don't know if it's worked for you, any of you guys, but sometimes you, a customer comes with something very basic, left chest logo, and you you know there's potential for other stuff, okay? There's potential for other stuff. Uh you can always show, or even I've even gone out of my way, especially when I'm trying to attract customers. And uh, specifically, there are some customers where you know you know you can take their their products to that next level. Okay, let's say you're doing a left chef's logo. This would be a situation where I would say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go out of my way and do a 3D puff hat for them. Okay, and then I'd be like, hey, here you go. Check this out. What do you think about it? All right, that's yours. It's it's yours to keep. Right. Worst thing that's going to happen. Right. They're going to have a very nice looking hat that they're going to show off. Right. Uh, best case. Right. People are going to see it at whatever company they work at. Be like, hey, I want I, I, I want something like that or I want a hat just like that. All right. That. Right. That's like the oldest trick in the book. 
is to kind of give them an extra something something okay and they come back be like yo they love that uh we, we're gonna order x amount okay so you see how we started with one simple design and we kind of have other um there's other ways right there's always other ways to um uh, upsell okay um and increase increase sales and of course you 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 make them look better right it's not only making you look better it's making that point of contact look better because now they're coming back to their business and they're like hey look at this type of stuff that we can do okay even though the embroidery shop is doing it they're taking credit for a lot of the stuff and it's all good if they take credit for all that stuff right but you got to know the options what what are options that we can do when can we tweak when when can we tweak the design a bit a tad bit Okay, and I, I like anytime I'm gonna tweak, for example, here I made the heart a little uh, bolder. Okay, anytime I'm doing some type of tweak like that, I let them know because there are, especially if they have a graphic designer at their job, all right, they might flip out if you do a little, a little change to the logo, all right? So if you are going kind of deviating a little bit for their benefit, always let them know uh, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and sometimes you could show them like uh, before and after, like this is before, this is after we make this adjustment. All right, just kind of FYI, just to kind of put it out there. All right, so, um, all right, looks like we're good with questions. All right, uh, if you could do me a favor, all right, if you could hit that like button, okay. Uh, YouTube, all right, uh, this year YouTube has um, kind of positioned our channel into like a, uh, an embroidery uh, learning channel and embroidery educational uh, channel. So I want to thank everybody, right, for uh, kind of pushing our channel towards that way. That 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 was my goal from day one when I started. I wanted to show people um, kind of not just how to do things, but why we're doing things, right? Because I think it's easy to teach how to do something, but it's a little bit harder to teach why are we doing something. And that's kind of like my style of teaching. And I'm very happy that uh, YouTube is pushing our channel towards like the educational side of embroidery. Okay. Um, so by you pushing like uh, really helps the channel. And um, I, re I really appreciate all the support that everybody has given to this channel. All right. All the feedback, your questions, your questions here in the chat, your questions every day, just in the regular uh, channels, right? Uh, makes the class and the learning environment 10 times better. All right. So I do want to thank everybody for that. Uh, just real quick, um, some of the some of the goals for this year, right? Everybody has goals. Uh, of course, we all have that we're going to work out, right? Everybody's going to work out. Everybody's going to lose uh, 30 pounds this year, right? Um, so I'm pretty sure health-wise, right? We all have uh, similar goals. Embroidery goals, right? Um, that's kind of where we might, right? Everybody has their own specific embroidery goals that, that you have, all right? Uh, for this channel, all right, we're going to go very, very hev heavy on the educational, on the templates, PDFs, putting out information. Just so if you do have a question, sometimes you don't have time, if you're like crunch time, you don't have time to go through a uh, uh, different tutorials and try to find the answer, right? Sometimes if you have something ready to go, Okay, I want to share all that information that I have here on my bookshelf. Right? I have a bookshelf just full of papers everywhere. I want to combine them, put them all together, and make it an easy source. So if you ever encounter a situation, right? For example, tension is always like year round. That is our number one question that we get that somebody can't set their tension. But if you have a booklet that kind of shows you, uh, you know, a quick reference, just to sometimes you know that sometimes you know. The correct answer you just want confirmation so sometimes if you have pdfs if you have references okay like quick references that you could go to bam all right i'm good right because sometimes that's all we need in embroidery is just confirmation that we're doing something correctly all right so look out for that i'm gonna kind of i'm gonna go real hard on that all right and of course uh we're gonna keep the live if you can tell me what days work best for you Okay, that way I could kind of uh, get a good survey. Okay, does Saturday morning work good for you? Um, 
Saturday mornings worked excellent for me this year. All right. Um, but if there's another day, right, Tuesday afternoon, I think I like I, I think I like uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoons are, are looking real good for me. All right. So if there are suggestions, if there's any feedback. All right. Uh, I'm very thick skinned. OK, if there's any feedback, anything that I can do to be better. Let me know. All right. Let me know that you're not going to break. You're not going to hurt my feelings. You're not going to do you know, you're not going to make me cry. If there's something that you would like to see something, you know, where we can take that channel to the next level. All right. Let me know. Let me know. All right. Um, and. And a uh, big thing also, uh, I went live today on Facebook, too, because I'm kind of trying that out. But I am going to put a lot of pictures on the Facebook. All right, a lot of our uh, notes that we have, I'm uh, putting it on Facebook too. So make sure you follow the Romero Threads Facebook. All right. Uh, hey, good morning, Rye Beats. All right, we got Rye Beats in the house. All right, looks like Saturday is good for me. All right, we got a brand new person, Nathan. All right. Yeah, I'll tell you something. When embroidery is brand new, I know when you're starting uh, embroidery and it's brand new, it's like so overwhelming because there's a thousand things you need to get right. OK, but the more you do it right, the more you do it, like we talked about repetition, repetition, it just becomes automatic where you're doing things automatic. You're not even thinking about it. OK, so that's the thing. That's the key right there. All right. Mornings, mornings, Saturday mornings, Saturdays. All right. Looks like Saturday mornings is pretty good. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all right. And then more goals is just uh, working with more uh, softwares. All right. So if there's specific softwares, I already have them brilliant. Uh, the Stitch Artist 3. So we're going hard on that. We're going to go hard on uh, Chroma. All right. I got the basics. I'm going to see how far we can take the regular basic chroma, how far we can have it. And then maybe we could start comparing it uh, different software with different softwares. All right. All right. Looks like Saturday's good. All right. I'm going to I'm I'm going to have Saturdays off at least for the next six months. So, I mean, Saturdays is good for me. All right. So. All right. So we're looking good right there. I do appreciate the feedback. All right. I do appreciate the feedback. Uh, I do appreciate you being here Saturday morning. All right. I know Saturday morning is one of the most, uh, one of the best days of the whole week, right? Out of seven days, Saturday mornings is like the best thing. So by you being here this morning, all right, means a lot to me. All right. It means a lot to me because you can be doing a thousand things and we are here learning. Okay. We are learning from each other because trust me. I am learning as much as you're learning. I'm learning also. All right. I'm learning also. All right. Uh, so this is the final Saturday morning embroidery class for the year. All right. Next year, we're going to take it to the next level. Uh, I'm going to kind of work on all the details at the time. OK, we might just keep the same time, just make it like a new season. Right. With, uh, but we might move a little quicker. We might start moving a little quicker next next year. All right, where I'm not really explaining every last minute detail, right? We're just kind of moving quick. All right, so these videos from this year, they're gonna stay here. Uh, I I don't edit them. I don't touch anything. Uh, just so if there's something that you kind of want information on, you can always go back and um, and reference it. But what I am gonna do, I am going to chapter and I'm going to time code all the episodes all right so make sure you save the playlist okay make sure you save your playlist make sure you share it okay and i'm gonna by time coding it it's gonna be easier if you have a question you can just drop down to the description and go straight to uh that topic that we're talking about all right so i'm looking forward to next year all right i'm, I'm super pumped up like I'm, I'm i'm ready to start right now for next year all right so, uh, all right. I want to thank everybody stopping by. See you next year. All right. Peace out, everybody.